one, and VZO87 here. In today's video, it's going to be a little bit different from all the others. Database. As you can see, it has been reopened. Or it will be. Right as this video starts, the database, you can check the link in the description, is officially reopened. And so is everything with it. There's a lot of stuff that we have to go through. There's a whole bunch of new stuff going on. Uh, I had to rebrand the whole site when I migrated it over to the new Google Sites. So a lot of the things that were cool about the old site got lost, so I had to re-implement them. Uh, the backgrounds were gone, fonts were gone, everything was gone, basically. It was basically like starting the entire database over, except I had a foundation to work with. Uh, so let's hop into it. Uh, as you can see, we still have our little fancy feature thing here. I don't know what the link actually clicks to. I've never clicked it. I'm a little scared. Oh, it's just the link to the Imgur, I think, of it. That's weird. I'm going to have to fix that. Anyway, <clears throat> Uh, Instagram, check us out. I'm on Instagram. Uh, we have a new Facebook group called the UU Hagger Show TCG Marketplace. Uh, it's a brand new group that uh, I've started. Uh, so, you, you know, you should join it. Talk about the game. Buy, sell, do what you need to do. Uh, the forum is still up and running. That never got taken down. Neither did the Instagram. Um, that's still around. And uh, for some of our future features, you might be needing the forum. So anyway... I want to give a warm welcome back to everyone. Uh, database is live once again. We've undergone a lot of changes since we were last opened. I'll have a YouTube video. Hey, that's what we're doing right now. Showcasing this. Uh, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff here uh, that we've gone through. So uh, we migrated to the new Google sites. We've added the Facebook group that I've now made. Uh, we rebranded the archive section. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, updated some more card information based on um, uncut sheets. Uh, all of our downloads are now hosted on a Google Drive so that no matter what device you are using, you will now have access to it. I was always uploading a notepad and a Word document. It was kind of a pain in the butt, but now that we're using Google Drive, we can just put everything we need on there. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff on there. I'll, we'll go through that soon. Uh, there's, I've created an unofficial CRD changes on the gameplay and team, play, uh, team bonuses page. Uh, there were a couple of issues with cards that never got corrected, uh, for whatever reason, so we have unofficially made those changes. You can ignore them if you want. Band a limit to, uh, limited to one errata list is updated to include what set the card is located in. Uh, the card images page to uh, properly show foil types of what sets they're found in, you'll see that soon. Uh, card inventory document, I did a lot of work on it. There's a preview. Um, you'll be able to download it or copy it, up to you. Uh, sell sheets, the uh, promo, promo sheets that would be sent off to uh, stores, own, store owners. Uh, I've included a picture of those on each of the checklist pages, you know, just to give it a little more extra pizzazz to it. Um, you will notice that every 50 cards has a weird gap between it. Uh, that's Google limitations, nothing I can do about that. Um, there are two lists on each page, that's nothing new. Uh, a full checklist and an individual checklist. Uh, the t car text pages, that had the biggest change. Uh, the car text pages now have an image of every card in the game, and any card that was eroded is now showing up in purple, so that's very cool. Uh, car text downloads to the main card page. I know that the car text page is now going to take a lot of time for it to load. It's going to take about 5 to 10 seconds for it to actually load if you've got a good computer. An older computer can take up to 30 seconds. So if you're just interested in the card text, um... If you, uh, I'll show you guys where it's located and how you can access it. Added a couple of documents to the Wayback Machine. The UFS section has gone under a lot of changes. I did scan um, the remaining UFS cards into the library so they are accessible and the library is also open again. Um, background, as you can see, this is actually ripped off of the old UU Hacker Show site. This isn't just a random background. This is from the old website, you know, paying a little homage to it. Or homage? I don't know how to say it. It's my, my math person. All link colors will be in green. Any um, And like I said, erratas are in purple. I did update a, the scan of the G0, the dark one, for a more crisp image. I did get a couple of complaints about the old image, so I've updated it. Uh, and I've added some more information at the bottom of this page. I'll go through that in a second. Future plan. We've got two things for the future plan. A deck building page. Uh, in this page, it will be player-suggested decks that will be posted for each team using either gateway format or alliance format. Uh, this, is, this has been asked by a couple of people. One of the things that the database never really focused on was the gameplay. Um, so we're going to try to expand that a little bit if we can. Uh, but that section is, it's not even like 
as you'll see, it's not even not even here. I haven't even created the section yet. It's very easy to do. Uh, but I have to figure out how I'm going to do it. I'm thinking maybe like a series of Google Docs um, showcasing the decks and then whoever sends it in like with an explanation of how the deck runs and everything. Or I, I don't know, something like that. Maybe it'll be a Google form you have to fill out. I still have to think about it. Um, single rainbow versus double rainbow video. Uh, I did make a new discovery on how to tell the difference between the two, uh, which is kind of important and it's helped me identify a couple of cards. Uh, going through eBay and people's collections with just pictures and not video. And uh, so that I, I do talk about that in the video I uploaded yesterday a little bit. I do show it a little bit. I had a lot more detail in it, but it got deleted because my phone ran out of space. Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, we're going to go through every page here. Um, the information that's new here at the bottom, uncut sheets are the higher rarity promos for Exile and Alliance. We have no information on them at all. Uh, actually, that also includes the commons and rares for those sets as well. We have no information. My guess is that Exile is broken into higher rarity and the promos, uh, higher rarity and spirit pack cards on one sheet. And then the other sheet is just the commons and rares. And then I think there's a third sheet, maybe. I don't remember for like the starter deck cards. And Alliance, I am of the opinion that the sheet is just 121 cards. That's my opinion. I don't think they separated rarity. Um, or maybe they did. I mean, they kind of always had to between the lower rarity and the higher rarity. But I, I don't know. I mean, the cards were all the same foil type, and maybe to save some money, they put all the foils on one sheet, and maybe the non-foils on another, and who knows. Uh, oh, I do have uncut sheets or comments, rares, and certain decks for Ghost Files, Dark Tournament, Exile, Betrayal, Alliance. I did have it here. Uh, existence of double rainbow foils for your Otoko, Yuuji Rise of Successor, Counter-Strike, and Meditation. They're rumored to exist, still no confirmation. So let's start going through the site, right? Let's go see what's new on it. Archive section is now collapsible text boxes. Um, all you have to do is click one and it pulls up the information that was posted that day. Um, yeah, some of these are really short. Some of them, like this one, is a little bit longer because this is when we had finished the um, the library. I think that's the right link. I hope it is. I have to, well, uh, whatever. Uh, card information. So this page shows some changes. As you can see, it does take a little bit of time for it to load because of the background image. Google uh, doesn't wrap text anymore. Uh, doesn't wrap images. In the old version of the site, the older versions, classic sites, the background would wrap and it would just infinitely repeat and it would save a ton of space. For whatever reason, Google got rid of that feature. I, I don't know why, uh, but they did. So now every single text box needs its own background, which is a pain in the butt. Um, so anyway, uh, first edition cards, I did clean this up a little bit. It, uh, first edition cards are available for every card except the following. Uh, uh, which are only available in Standard Edition, the Ghost Files promos, and their Spirit Pack counterpart Start Tournament insert cards, um, and the Join a League insert card from Gateway. That was never available in First Edition. Uh, these are only available in First Edition. Any promo or Spirit Pack card from any set except Ghost Files, uh, and the Cool Bar Noble Champion, as well as the corrected version of Storm of Torment. Those are only available in First Edition. Um, there, just the note though that the Kubar cool Noble Champion, single, which is only the single rainbow version, and some Spirit Pack two cards have been found as standard edition. These are probably misprints though, so these are not official releases. Uh, we have all the release dates there, the card legend, nothing there changed. Uh, I did start using bullets for all this, so you could see things a little more easily. I felt that having bullets here just makes it a little bit simpler to read. Uh, we do have some card information, other card information here as well. That talks about the, usually the uncut sheets. For example, Ichigaki and Rokurukai on the starter deck sheet were printed at every four, whereas Yurameshi and Taguro were printed every five. So there was a tiny bit more Taguro and Yurameshi teams than there were Rokurukai and Ichigaki, but not much. It's five to four ratio. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Uh, younger to girl latent warrior was two to every three ghost rares on the sheet so younger to girl was actually the more rare ghost rare uh you would have like three halts three i'm calling you outs and three burst of powers but only two younger to girl latent warrior so he is a slight short print uh genkai the young shishiwakamaru soul stealer genkai bunch busted and armor of clay were six to every seven so those five cards actually had a slightly shorter print than their other spirit rare counterparts. Um, the uber rares, however, there was they were all equal, no no differences. Dark tournament, uh, same thing. You know we have it broken down. Some other card information there. I'm not going to go through it. You could go through the rest of the sets on your own. This talks about the promos for Gateway. 
Uh, I think there's more information about the Hie and the Head on Assault and Head on and uh, Crazy World at the bottom. Um, there's some information about the Hie Determined Warrior. Uh, this has been there for a while, though. Uh, but there is a little bit more information I've added in there, so go in there and read it on your own time. We talk about the uncut sheet here at the bottom, Exile. Talk about the starter deck cards not being available in foil and uh, other information, which is practically nothing. We have nothing on exile, basically. Uh, betrayal, very short, very to the point. Alliance, also same thing. Uh, this is the number of cards that exist for each thing. This was also around before the database was closed, but it was one of the last updates. Uh, it, just to give you an idea how many of each of these are, I feel like Storm of Torment is probably less than 50, but I'm not 100% sure, so I took a safe route and said less than 100. Um, Dark One, how many are out there? The Standard Edition, Kuwabara, right now we're only up to four that we know exist. I have one, Karmic has one, Zoraku has one, and I think Cynic also now has one. I don't know if he ever purchased it off the guy that had one. Your Otago, um... Right, it's a successor. He had determined warrior, double rainbow, only one known to exist. So keep that in mind on your lists. Uh, crazy world, we got head on assault. Head on assault, we're up to five actually. Uh, we know of five that exist. I currently own three of them. I don't know who owns the fourth. If I had to guess, I want to guess Melissa, but I'm not sure if she actually does. Um, and the fifth one is someone I traded it too many years ago, and I don't remember who. I thought I knew who, but I apparently don't. Uh, Hatred, Peak, Serenity, so yeah, keep in mind, he ate the term warrior, double rainbow, only one known to exist, so don't assume you have it, you probably don't. Gameplay and team bonuses, this page saw a couple of changes. Once it loads, as you can see, it does take a little longer now for everything to load because there's no text wrapping, or background image wrapping, I mean. Um, blah, blah, blah. I made this a little more colorful. Unofficial CRT changes is a brand new section. Uh, so Suzuka in Ghost Files, as well as Alliance, Keep him, uh, the name is actually supposed to be Suzuki, um, so that was a mistake that never got corrected. It was a mistranslation in America, or maybe there was some other reason. Uh, for the Dark One, we're going to ignore the reprint Panini. You can use it, I guess, but just, well, technically you can't, because um, it has to be signed in order to be uh, tournament legal, so you can't use it anyway. Uh, Hiei, Dark Fighter, uh, the effect main summoning is lacking the words you may. All the other ones have you may in it, except Hiei, so I feel like that was probably a miss on their part. Uh, Kokuo, Broken Heart, is actually speak Koko, Koku, or however you say it, Broken Heart, if that was a mistake in the name. Technically, right now, you could use both characters in the same deck because they're different names. Double Bladed Knives accidentally has the characters thing here, plural, giving all of your characters attacks 2,000. Um, so that was a correction there. Down here, here's some new stuff. Uh, instead of having links to everything, you're going to get a preview, and you can just, you know, open it and download it. So if we click open on this, you'll see that it opens a new page, and it gives you instructions at the top on how to actually uh, make a copy for yourself. Okay, I had to make sure that was actually spelled correctly. So that's all the team bonuses. Um, there's some uh, CRD rulers, uh, ruling document is here, so the No More Ugly Word document. Uh, we have the official one here. You can just open it and download it. And we've got some older ones here, too. We've got the demo deck uh, that was downloadable from the old site on here. You uh, could print out the cards on paper and use this to teach yourself how to play. Following um, the pretty cute Amber here, who that was like 20 years ago. Goodness, Amber. Hopefully time hasn't... No, I'm kidding. Um, the Spirit Detective Manual for Exile. Uh, it used to be three documents. They never had it in a single document. I went ahead and edited it to be a single document. And then you also have the original one here. Again, you can open those and download them too. Uh, this decks, these decks here were the ones that were posted on the Funimation website. These were developed by Scott. It was all the decks that he talked about in his videos. Um, on, uh, you can find those on my YouTube channel as well. I've actually been meaning to download that and re-upload them as a single video. Right now it's broken into two parts. Um, so I might download those and re-upload them as a single video. Uh, this is new stuff. Uh, while going through my computer, I found some cool stuff. I found the winner's report from Worlds by Rob. 
like all of his matches, how he played it out, a description of what happened, how he won, and things like that. Um, it looks like uh, Adam Sheehan signed his uh, game as the foot foil, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's really cool. I think Adam would like to see this. I, I think I'm going to send this over to him. I think he would really enjoy seeing this report. Uh, he spelled Scott Seeger's name wrong in here. Oh, but there's a, uh, yeah, by Rob. But, uh, as you can see, he had his account name and everything on it. I say, I'm so glad I saved that, uh, these reports because they're no longer available. They, the website got, uh, switched and over. It migrated and not all the posts migrated over. Uh, that was like UU Realms or something like that. I don't remember the name. Uh, we also have the second place, Magic Weasel. Uh, this was, what's his name? Uh, uh, his name's over here. Uh, Glenn. So this was Glenn's deck, and uh, it was a report on how his deck ran and everything, and what he did, and uh, how he unfortunately lost in the finals against Rob, uh, because Rob was uh, abusing uh, All You Need Is The Ground, and uh, they ended up eroding All You Need Is The Ground after this tournament because of how broken they didn't like it was, and they didn't realize it was. So uh, Rob's deck does not actually work anymore, but Glenn's deck still does. Because it doesn't abuse uh, all you need is the ground. So he, he had a good deck. He had a very good deck. Uh, over here, the last one is from the official uh, website itself. I I must have saved this many years ago. Because I couldn't find it on Wayback Machine. So props to me for saving the top four deck list. Um, so you have Rob's first place. You have Glenn's second place. Uh, they have a little uh, description there. Uh, and then you have Mike uh, Cancellieri, who got third slash fourth with a Ronin deck. So props to him for the Ronin deck. I love Ronin. It's my favorite deck. Although he did he, he did not use Jury in it. Oh, he did. Oh, she was the fifth. That's really weird. Um, so that's interesting. And then you have Zach here as well, who got third, fourth, also using Team Karama. So... The deck was apparently very innovative. So yeah, uh, we have all that there. Band list. This change didn't change much. I did make one slight change, and that was to put down what set each card uh, that was banned or limit one per deck is located in. So, uh, just yeah, wanted to throw that out there. Card images. This page got a lot of changes to it. I do have the card image library. It is still there. If you click it, it will open this. And you can go into each one. I do have a mobile-friendly one as well. All the sets are there. Pre-release cards, UFS set 1, um, which we'll go to a little bit later. But the, uh, where is it? And also extra cards. I kind of wish I could rename these a different way, but it's fine. You can figure them out. Uh, so the Scratch is foil. So this is, I, I revamped this to show where you find each foil type. So like, the Scratches is in the Spirit, Ubers, and Ghost Rares and Ghost Files, as well as the Spirit Pack, Spirit, Ubers, and Ghosts. Uh, for the Streaks, you have only in Dark Tournament for the Spirit, Ubers, and Ghosts, the Spirit Pack Commons Rares, Spirits, Ubers, and Ghosts, the Promo Cards, and the League Set. And you can see this is actually the new scan of the Dark One. Very, very clean. Like, there's almost no flaws. I think the only flaw I see is this little white speck here. And these couple of specs here. But it is literally a flawless scan. Oh, I see something here too. But I think this was on the card. I did not... Like, I took my most mint dark one I could uh, that I had. Uh, because two... Actually, two out of the four are not in mint condition. They're not in that great of shape, to be honest. Um, but I don't care about that. Single rainbow foils. We have the ghost vials, spirit pack rares, and the starter deck foils. As well as Dark Tournament, Common, and Rare Foils. And then in Gateway, the non-Team Leader Common Foils and non-Team Leader Rare Foils. That word and is not supposed to be there. Uh, I have to go in and edit that out. Uh, as well as the Team Bonus, League Set, and the Promo Cards. For Gateway. Uh, and then we have the Lined, Cloudy, and Jagged. Those are only in Gateway. The Double Rainbow. Uh, right now, since we only have it on promos 1, 2, and 3, those are the only ones I've listed. I did not list the others because we haven't found them yet. Um, but Double Rainbow's list is pretty expansive. It's it's a lot of sets that it goes in. The Speckles was Exile, Wavy was Betrayal, and Alliance was only Double Rainbow. And then there's a little note down here about Double Rainbow foils that I included. Uh, this page, uh, I'm going to be redoing the tutorial here sometime soon. Uh, hopefully within the next week or two.
uh, talks about the different foil types, how you can identify them. So I, you can see that we have this vertical rainbow here that's running on this tracking device. Um, it doesn't guarantee that it's going to be double rainbow, but it increases the odds that it probably is. Now, this Clash of Champions is 100% double rainbow. You see that this looks a little red up here, right? That's because the edge is double is foiled out. Only the double rainbows have a foil edge. So believe it or not, I think the tracking device here might not actually be double rainbow. But you can tell that Clash of Champions definitely is. Because look, the edge is foil. That does not happen on single rainbow. So I can say with 100% certainty that this Clash of Champions is double rainbow. And I think I need to... Yeah, I said tracking device. That's incorrect. I need to go back and change this. So I'm going to have to fix that before I officially open the database for you. Uh, Shigure, you can see the edges are foiled out, so double rainbow. Now we go through pictures here using Malice. Malice is one of the easiest cards to identify double rainbow on. So this is a single rainbow. And you'll need to see that the double rainbow is a little bit darker, but you'll see the little embedded grid-like format squares on the card. You can, that's how you can also tell that it's double rainbow. Um, and then this gives you some places that you can check as well. Of course, saying that these four don't exist. How easy it's to get to each known one. So there's all that. Card inventory. So it's cell document. I have a preview document down here. But if you click this, it brings you to the drive. And then you can open this and, you know, copy it and whatever. Um, so yeah, click me. You don't need to do that. You already did that. Uh, ghost files, you know, pretty straightforward. It automatically adds it up for you. So two, two gives you four. And so on and so forth. Um, I did put some blank spaces here. The font comes out white. So, like, let's say if we find a Veruca first edition, you can put the number in there as an unreleased card. So, just something that you can do. In case, because in this card game, you never really know. Um, I do include a whole bunch of extra stuff down here. You can delete that if you really want. Um, this summation here is only cards, no sealed product. So, that means everything up to the Storm of Torment would count. But everything underneath it does not count. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Dark Tournament, same thing. In case we find a first edition non-foil Yukina, you can add it. And it would count if we, in case we find standard edition stuff. Or if you ever get your hands on an uncut sheet, you can include the numbers in these black areas. Uh, same thing down here. Uh, I, didn't, I put the 9-card puzzle as a single thing It was because I was lazy. Uh, you can fix that if you want. Uh, but yeah, the sealed product stuff here will not count towards the total. So the, the issue with the Karama, Burst of Power, the Blu-ray, if you have it sealed, they will not count. So if, you, if I put a 1 here, as you can see, it never updates. But if I put a 1 here, it does update. And then, of course, all the uh, different accessory stuff. Uh, Gateway gets a little messier, but I've blocked out all the things where it should not or doesn't typically exist. So it looks a little messy. Keep in mind, Join a League does not exist in 1st Edition, only as the Standard Edition. Uh, we've got the Team Bonuses, you've got all the Tournament Cards, League Sets, uh, and then all the accessory stuff, the shirts, including the uh, Judge League shirt, the Judge Team Bonus shirt, uh, and the Shop Chief shirt. Again, if you don't collect them, don't worry about it, you can delete those, it won't affect your bottom line here. Exile, same thing, straightforward. We have Betrayal, same thing, straightforward. And then, of course, Alliance as well. Uh, I will say for Betrayal, uh, Alliance was the easiest to program, let me tell you. For uh, Alliance, I do have a Booster Blister version of the sales sheets. Again, if you don't want to include those, you don't have to. I have it there, just in case for you big hardcore folks. Checklists. Wow, this video is going to be about a half hour, uh, maybe. Checklists. Uh, I didn't really update anything at the top, but I do have all the checklists here at the bottom. As soon as it finishes loading, it's not done yet. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you can just open it and download. These are the full checklists, so that includes the foil cards and the different uh, foil types for Gateway. So foil, foil, and foil. Uh, you also have individual checklists. Some of you don't care about foils. So you just want a copy of the card. These lists here just have a single copy of everything. Um, hold on, I want to see about dark one on here. I do have the three different kinds of dark ones, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so there's all of that. Just times one copy of all the cards. 
Uh, and then it goes through each page. I'm not going to really go too in depth. I'm going to kind of skip over them, but I am going to show the top that, like, start, everything has, now has an image at the top. Uh, here are the teams. There were th four possibilities there. You have, I should really clean this up a little bit. It looks a little weird having it like this. Um, Chu, Ichigaki, Taguro, and Yurameshi. I am going to clean this up. I don't like the way this looks. And then the different uh, starter deck possibilities. So part possibility one, two, and three. In case you don't know, the second card in the stack will tell you what it is. There's a Gata support for possibility one, Garota for possibility two, and Goku Monkey for possibility three. So in case you didn't know that, the second card in that stack will tell you what stack it is. So let's open these. Ghost Files. You know, nice little promotional sheet there. And then the checklist of the cards. As you can see, there's a gap here. Again, that's Google limitations, unfortunately. So every 50 cards will have that weird gap in it. So I apologize for that. But there is quite literally nothing I can do about that. Uh, for the Storm of Torment, I do have a little note here saying that the card never saw official release. So keep that in mind. Uh, Pre-release cards, the demo deck. And then a checklist stuff. Dark Tournament. Again, you can open those to uh, create a document that you can download. We have Dark Tournament here, the pr promo poster. Full checklist with the foils and everything included. Uh, and then a couple of notes there about the Dark One for you collectors out there. Uh, -da 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 -da. Oh, I do have the checklist here for all nine card puzzle. Hmm, interesting. Uh, and then, uh, you know... The uh, times one copy and then the full checklist and the individual checklist. Same thing for Gateway. I'm not going to scroll through it, I think. Especially because Gateway is going to take a long time to load. Either that or my internet just cut out. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, there's the Gateway promo sheet. And you can see single rainbows, double rainbows. And the non-foil for you Psycho collectors as well. But if none of that interests you... We have the individual checklist down here, where it's just one copy of every card, uh, regardless of the foil type that it is. Again, sorry about the weird gaps in there, but if you want, I recommend just downloading it straight from the Google Doc. No weird gaps in that. Exile, I have the two sheets that are there. Same thing, it goes through foil and non-foil at the top. And if you get about halfway through the page, you have the individual checklist, and then of course the checklists on the bottom. The full checklist, and then the individual one. Betrayal, same exact thing. There's our pretty little poster with Yoko Kurama on it. Full checklist. As you can see, I put a white thing here. I put a divider here so you can see, you know, visually see the difference. And then, of course, Alliance as well. There's our promo sheet. Here are all the cards. And then, uh, keep in mind... Team bonus cards aren't foil in there, and then an individual list, and of course that at the bottom. The biggest change, the card texts. Uh, so, a couple of changes here. As soon as the page loads, uh, erratas will be in purple. So if a card text is in purple, it means the card was eroded. Um, I have included character stuff here, how to identify the word Ronin. It'll say Team Ronin if they have no team symbol. I didn't feel like putting, like, symbolless or teamless. I just, I, I don't know. I, I like Ronin better. That's the name for it. Um, and then the items, events, and the, the techniques. Uh, and then all the card text for all successes here, in case you can't get the individual pages to load. Ghost Files. Let's look at this. So this page saw a humongous change. It took me such a long time to do all this. But from here forward, you will have a card image. The title of the card. What is that? Oh, copy heading link. That's so weird. You could copy that? That's funky. Anyway. Um, and then the text here underneath it. So I have this for every card uh, in the entire set. So we can, uh, we can skip through this a little quickly. Uh, so here's like, okay, so you see like Kuro Momotaro's name is in purple because they spelled his name wrong. They put Momotaru and edited, and they eroded it to Momotaro. And they also changed his effect to a sideline effect. So anything you see in purple means that's where an errata took place. And uh, yeah, the entire set's here. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you have the document at the bottom as well. Uh, just like, 
this is awesome. This took, like I said, this took me a very long time to do. Um, easily about 20, 20, 25 hours or so to do this for every single set, for every single card. Uh, so here is a Dark Tournament. Um, by the way, when we get to these darker colored cards, the scans aren't going to be the perfect. Um, it's very hard to scan dark cards. As you can see, everything shows up. So I'm sorry that the quality is a little bit less when we get to these cards. Quite literally, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, it took me a, quite a few tries to get that dark one image as clean as it is. I did include, decide to include the non-foil images here. I feel like that uh, the foil kind of takes away from some of the art. So I included the non-foils here. Just as an FYI. Uh, so we're not going to go through all of it, but I am going to go through at least open up each set a little bit. For Gateway, I chose to do the lined foils. I felt like that they uh, were... I was going to do Cloudy. I probably should have done Cloudy, but it's too late now. I don't feel like fixing it. Uh, as you can see, there was an errata on this card, an errata on this card, and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I picked the lined. My reasoning for it is that it's the most common type that we see. That lined is just... I've got a feeling that like when they printed sheets, they did like every three line sheets was too cloudy and one jagged. That's my opinion. I don't know if that's a fact or not, but that's just my opinion. And then the non-foils for the regular cards. So yeah, in the past, this page used to contain just um just the card text, and it was kind of boring. Uh, I, but I think that this will make people a lot happier, so they can actually physically see what the card looks like. As well as, the, I want to get rid of this copy heading link thing. This is kind of irritating me. I have to see if there's a way to get rid of that, although that's going to take me an hour to do for every card. Um, so yeah, here it is as well for Exile. Uh, like I said, we're not going to go crazy on that. We've got Betrayal. Same exact thing. The pages are actually loading a lot faster than I thought. Uh, it looks like in the editor, for me, it takes a really long time to load. And then uh, Alliance as well. Very last set. And that's, uh, like I said, this, this took me a couple of weeks to put the six sets together. Um, once I got into a groove, though, it took me only a day to do Alliance. Like, it didn't take that long. Price guide. Let's talk about this. We got a price guide. We have got a price guide. So if we click this link, it will bring you to the price guide. Uh, some of the things here are still being tinkered with. So the numbers that you see here in this video are not finalized. Um, but it goes through all the cards of higher rarity. Uh, their rarity. So it gives the card number, the card name, their rarity, and then an approximate value. So here on the title page, please, I'm going to go through this actually. These are things you need to keep in mind with the price guide. All prices are subject to change at the drop of a hat. What's worth $10 today might be $2 tomorrow, might be $25 the following day. Uh, if suddenly everybody wants a specific card, you may end up paying more than normal. So like if all of a sudden three people need Karama's Last Stand, what the guide might say is $10, you might pay $15 or $20 because supply and demand. Again, this is a guide, not a Bible. When you sell or buy in bulk, you will never get the individual price of every card. When you are selling a collection, do not expect to get the value of every card. Expect to sell it between 60 and 75% of the individual value. So if you add up all the cards in your collection and it says it's $800, you might get you, you might get an offer of around 500 for it. You know, especially if it's going to someone who has to resell them individually. Uh, also, keep in mind, if you have like 10 Toyas from Ghost Files... Oh, why does it say Ghost Rare Files? That's so weird. I have to... F can I fix that on this page? No, I can't. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. That's so weird. <laughs> um... So yeah, uh, if you got 10 Toyas from Ghost Files that are worth only 2 bucks, that doesn't mean that they're worth 20. It decre your value of them decreases significantly when the numbers are that high. I like If someone had 10 Toyas and they're like, yo, you want these 10 Toyas? I would be like, bro, I'm going to give you like 4 bucks for it. So keep that in mind. More doesn't always mean better. First edition, standard edition, aka limited, do not typically hold too much of a value difference. Uh, they'll be open to the fact you may get offered at 80% of a first edition value, especially in Alliance. This will especially hold true in Alliance. Sealed product will almost always be worth more than the combined value of the cards inside unless you hit those winner cards. That's almost always going to happen, no matter what. The, a sealed booster box will always be worth more than the product inside. So if you're buying stuff to open it, uh, that's your call. You're getting mint cards, at the very least. You're getting cards that, are, that could potentially grade at a 10 if you're into that. 
Tournament common and tournament rare foils tend to be more sought after. No, your foil. Why does it say tournament common? Oh, that's a typo. Because I did an, I did an all change on here. Um, no, I can't fix that right now. It's supposed to say a T a O T O U R N A M N T space. Oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, I was making a couple of changes and I did a I did an everything change. T O U R N A M E N T space. Oh, I forgot about the whatever. I'll fix it later. That's supposed to say common and rare foils, not tournament common and tournament rare foils. Common and rare foils tend to be more sought after. Know your foil differences. Check the database for more information. Like, can I move this? I can't move that. Okay. My screen recorder is blocking it and I can't remove it, so I can't actually edit anything. Um, so yeah, that's supposed to say common and rare foils. I'll fix it. Those are typically more sought after. Um, and Make sure you know your differences. Check the database. They'll help. I'll do my best to highlight uh, every one to two months in a red font color when a price is dropped, uh, green when a price has risen. I'm not going to do that. I need to fix that. I'm going to just put a little note there saying that the that the price changed. Uh, lastly, the values in the price guide are based on sales completed. They're not really based on my opinion at all. Um, but there will be notes throughout. I'll have the link to the database in there. I have to fix that too. So I've got a couple of things I still need to fix, guys, before I open this tomorrow. Because I'm recording this the day before, as you can see down on the bottom. Uh, but yeah, Ghost Files. Uh, we have all the higher rarity cards here. Yeah, I was replacing words here. I had originally written just Ghost and Uber and Spirit and Common. And I was like, that's kind of lame. So I replaced it and forgot about the page one. Haha, <laughs> my bad. Uh, but yeah, everything's on here. Uh, approximate values. Just keep in mind some things are small number of sales, like Spirit Gun Double Stamped. Uh, Storm of Torment Corrected. Origins Pre-Release Card. Uh, I mean, I sold the Spirit Gun Double a couple months ago for $140, I think. Like, double, almost, what this is saying. So just keep that in mind, that supply and demand, it happens. Uh, value of the non-foils, uh, value of booster boxes, uh, value of sealed stuff, and, of course, the value of a Spirit Pack 1. We also have, uh, oh, you'll notice at the top of the page is frozen, by the way. I have the first line frozen for you. Um, and, you know, Yoko the Spirit Fox, Forlorn Hope, those are the winners here. Dark One, signed, Last Tales, I've heard there's two of them at 3,000. Unsigned hasn't sold in a while, 2,000, that number is... <sighs> so this is one of those numbers where it's hard to put a, a price on it, because we don't know. One hasn't been sold in a long time. However, in my opinion, if one were to sell, a two... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm talking too much. Um, if one were to sell, I think 2,000 is very uh, is a minimal number. I think we would see 3,000 easy for an unsigned because there's like five people I know that are looking to buy one. So uh, the reprint, uh, I did have a little note here about sealed burst of power being worth a little more, but more than the unsealed one. Miss Shinobi's gone back up in price. Uh, the league cards, the tournament cards, non-foil comments and rares. Uh, booster boxes, this is about what you'll pay for a first edition and an unlimited. Blister pack, uh, there hasn't been a, an, uh, like a, a blister pack sold in a while. Not by itself, there's still a blister box or two on eBay. Spirit pack 2, uh, the last one that sold was was by me. I purchased it for 20 bucks, I believe. Uh, so there's a very limited number of sale, uh, sales for spirit pack 2. Uh, common and rare foils. Dollar fifty for the common foil. Rare foil is three dollars. Flashback Sakio's lighter for Kurukai Challenge. You know the cards that are worth a little bit more than their average common and rare foils. I do have prices there for them and their non-foil counterparts. Gateway. Add one to three dollars for jagged foils. It's just how it's always been. The jackets are, you know, they seem more rare. Uh, I, I don't know, um, but they they do typically sell for slightly more than their lined and cloudy counterparts. Um, but yeah, all the cards are here. Uh, the special rare, hidden rare team, um, hidden, the team leaders. Uh, the inserts at Hie Exile set teaser, seventy-five dollars. Uh, the reprints, single rainbow and double rainbow for the league set, single rainbow and double rainbow uh, for the promos. Uh, like I said, this is the highest offer I've gotten for a Hie Determined Word double rainbow that I have. Is it worth that? I don't know. But it's the highest offer I've gotten. 
So it's the only number I have to go on, which is why I have a note here saying that that's just the highest offer because it's there's only one copy that we know of. Head on Assault, uh, $200 for the double rainbow. It's based on a small number of sales. Uh, the last one sold for $250. Uh, the one I bought, I got for 75 so I think 200 is a pretty fair number. The Cool Bar Noble Champion Single Rainbow uh, Unlimited is worth $50. That's what I heard the last one, I think, sold at. So that's what I have there. Your Otago, $700. Um, I think the last one I sold was for $900. Uh, I don't know if you would get $700 for it now, $900. It, it's kind of hard to say. There was another price guide uh, that had it listed at 600 I think because there was a sale for 500 for it, and I think that's where they got the 600 from. But, um, yeah, I think 700 is a pretty fair number for it. You just get Rise of Successor based on sales. It's worth at least $500, which is insanity to me. Um, but there's been a couple of people that have purchased it at that price or higher, so it is what it is. Uh, the tournament cards, uh, non-foil. Booster box, 375 for first edition box is what I've seen as the last numbers. Unlimited. Haven't seen one in a while. Uh, I think there may have been one for 325. That's going off of memory. This is why there's a note here saying that there's been no recent sales. Uh, the blister pack, $12 is what it typically sells for. Spirit pack, 315 Typical sale. Single rainbows are about $2 for the common. Uh, and for the rares, about $3 per. The common double rainbows are six dollars. I've been purchasing them for about seven or eight, and I've been purchasing the rares for around nine to ten dollars. Um, but I know some people don't pay that much for them, so I accounted for that in here. Um, the four that are more sought after: Karamas and Germination, Panic, Stop It, and Kenko. I think the you know or not. I think based on sales, that's what the, these are what they typically go for. So a little bit more than your average common foil. Exile. Uh, so we have all the cards here as well. You know, you could go through that on your time. Uh, the not the new stuff, the stuff that you probably haven't seen before on most price guides or uh, maybe any price guides. The non foils, how much they sell for. The starter deck cards, about what they sell for. Booster box, last recorded no purchase was at four hundred or five hundred dollars, somewhere around there. Unlimited has not sold in a while. Uh, blister pack, $8 is what I've seen. Spare pack, 4 13 That's what eBay says. Common foil is about 5 bucks, and the rare foil is around 7 With these four being a little more popular, Yusuke Tribal Fighter. Again, these are based on previous sales. Uh, complete King sets. These numbers I'm not 100% sure on. I, I asked Karmic his opinion on those. So these might not be the finalized prices, so keep that in mind. That's what I think they sold for, but he would know better than I would. He just hasn't had time to sit down and look at it. Uh, betrayal. Uh, these are prices. You know, Serenity, 200. Grim, about 185. It's surprising that Grim is now less than Serenity. Never used to be that way, man. But it is what it is. Uh, Yomi, the Ghost Rare, a tournament Ghost Rare, I saw sold for about 70 pretty recently. And I saw that the uh, Ghost Rare lower left sold for 125 recently. And then the two pieces being about 30. Uh, again, I'm not sure about the complete king here for Yomi. I think the last one that was first edition sold for 250, but it might have been 200, so that price might need to be adjusted. Uh, first edition booster box typically sell at 325. That's about what I've seen them sell for. A limited, it's been a while, um, but I believe around 250 to 275 is where it was. The blister packs have sold for $20. Spirit pack five for 13. Common and rare foils, 5 and 7. Yusuke Demonic Air at 13. He's a pretty popular one. Ryzen at 10. Um, and then the, a couple of other cards worth a little bit more than their average counterparts. Alli uh, yeah. Alliance. Uh, for Alliance in particular, limited cards are usually set at 80% of their first edition value. Uh, so the Rise of Thunder God goes for a piece. This is an approximate value. I will. Uh, there's been no... None that have sold recently. The last one that sold... Individually sold for 900 during the hype. It is not worth 900, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but I think 400 would be a fair number based on trends. 110, I could see for the upper right, lower left. Absolutely, I've seen them before. 80 for the lower right, seen it before. Uh, no and replay and solitaire have all sold at these values previously. You get champion of the people, uh, and where is it? Yomi the reformed, right? There he is. Also selling for a decent amount. 
Non-foils, these are about what you could expect to pay per card. First edition is here. Unlimited is there. First edition booster box, they've sold multiple times at 1200 Is that what it's worth? That's up to you. Again, it's a guide. This is not a Bible. I know some people will disagree with that price completely, and that's fine. Again, though, this is what it's consistently sold at. So whether you agree or not, it doesn't matter because it's based on sales. Uh, 925 for damaged. Just as uh, throwing it out there. I did put the Unlimited in its own separate thing. There has only been one sale of an Unlimited box. It sold on Macari for $180, I think. And then with like shipping and taxes, it was about $200. Obviously, that was way less than it should have been sold for. Um, when I offered to trade it, or trade slash buy it, I had offered a first edition box and $200. To the person so that they were basically getting a first edition box for free they declined that offer uh the box that i was going to send them was damaged so it was around a nine at the time they were selling for a thousand and then another 200 so that's why i have it as the same price as a first edition it could be worth more it could be worth less uh, i think the price of first edition boxes are starting to go down so i think that unlimited being at 1200 might be fair i'm not 100 percent sure um, but that's what I have offered for it before, uh, and nobody else has tried to offer for it. Foils. Common event items and text tend to be $7. Characters tend to be around $13. The event items and text for the rares are around $9, and the characters are about $15. There are a bunch of exceptions. Yusuke Human World's Hero Foil, $25 bucks easy, and the non-foil, easy $15. Heroes United and Influence at 11. Regression sells for a tiny bit more. When we get to the commons, Hiei, Kurama, Kuwabara, all selling at $18 pretty consistently. From what I've seen, Rikuro, Ryzen at 17 and Younger Daguro a tiny bit more at 18 Gale Force, pretty consistent at $15. Upsurge, consistently at 20 Armor of Containment, consistently at 12 And then Koematron, consistently, that I've seen, at $10. The complete Ryzen set. Last two sales that I saw, $750 for a first edition. That's why I can't put $900 here for this upper left piece, even though that was the last sale. It doesn't make sense for the one piece to be $900 and the complete king to be $750. I think that if it were sold separately at this point, we could see $400. So this is a guess number. It's not set in stone. That's again, that's why it says no recent sales. That's important. So keep that in mind. Um, and I did see a 600, uh, an unlimited set sell for 600 on Bakari not too long ago. So that's the price guide. This video is going to end up being an hour. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, I have to go in and make some corrections to that uh, before I uh, release it to you guys. Videos and pictures, not too much has changed here. I did have to take away a couple of the uncut sheets per request. Uh, the ones that we lost were gateway. We lost a couple of gateway sheets, uh, but all of mine are up there. Uh, the Dark Tournament base set one is not mine, neither is the Betrayal Space set video. That one is also not mine. Uh, and yeah, so there's that. Uh, I have my Master Collection video series there. I have to update this, my UU Collection video. So I've got some updating to do. Uh, I did add some more stuff to this. Uh, there was a couple of things that I found. I don't remember what's new and what's not, but we have Tournament Overview. We have the volunteer program stuff, which you can see the, the list of cards down here. You had show had Yusuke Ryzen Successor and Yuro Otago. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Uh, as well as Shishomaru Aristocratic Assassin and Tetsuya Transformed. Hey, look. There was a Sonic promo there. <laughs> uh, you could also get booster displays. That's pretty cool. Uh, what could you get for Yu Yu Hagusho? Any of them. Oh, man. Um, and then an older one that had... Oh, there's nothing on it. There's no Yu Yu Hagusho on this. So I guess I just showed it. Yeah, I don't know why I put this here. This doesn't really need to be here. Right? Uh, I'll keep it there, whatever. Uh, general rules for 7, uh, the Code of Conduct, the Host Judge Manual, event, and then some older event manuals. Uh, the scorecards. Deck list when you were entering at Realms or into a 7 event competition. We also have the Funimation page. Uh, I took a picture of this before it got taken down. It's no longer available. I'm glad I did. And then the Yu Yu Hagusho library. You can actually click on these links, but they don't work. So you can go through it. All the card text is there. 
So that's pretty cool. Uh, UFS, and then we're done. We'll be done. We'll be done in an hour. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, so I did update all of this. This is all updated. Uh, this is the, uh, in case you don't know, the premiere set for Yu Yu Hagasho in Universal Fighting System, which was renamed Universes, uh, released the Yu Yu set. It was set number 33. Uh, I'm only collecting. I'm not playing, though. Uh, it released in September 6th, 2019. By the end of this year, supposedly, set 2 Dark Tournament will release. I don't know if that's the official name, so just telling you that now. Uh, there's currently 112 unique cards to collect. Boxes are 24 packs, packs are 10 cards, 6 commons, 3 uncommons, and then an ultra rare in every 4 or so packs, so about 6 per box. They were pretty generous. Um, you could go to the Jasco's official site that shows all the images, or you could go to my Google Drive here and download them in one felt swoop. Uh, I will go to the bottom of this because we did. I did upload some new stuff. I re-uploaded. I uploaded images of the alt arts uh, because they were not available before, or they were, but it was from a different website, and I, I, I didn't like that. I want my own on here. Uh, the full arts were here before. Uh, is the bottom of this page going to load? Oh, Google. Okay, so let's try this. Womp. There we go. So I forced it to, to load. Uh, so these are all the full arts. And then we have the promos here. Uh, they didn't have promo 23 on their site, so I have uploaded it here. And then we have um, the World's 2020 foil cards. So these were all foils, even though, yeah, Chrome is a little dark. I'm sorry. Uh, there's two cool bars. As you can see, there's five out of eight. Uh, and then this one. So this one was released to replace... This cool bar because on the upper right corner they put the plus in the wrong location so they re-released it and it was i don't know if you were supposed to trade it in or whatever the case may be uh you have rando suzaku and then the use k and then the brand new card back oh that's terrible quality i should have gotten a better one ah whatever i don't care so yep yeah, all of ufs is on there uh we have the premiere oh hold on we got to go back uh, we'll go back in a second. Uh, the checklist is here uh, with all the different alt arts, full arts, the 2020 promos, um, and then, you know, a checklist here. Uh, let's go back there for a second. I do have the CRD here at the bottom. They do have a CRD uh, because there were a couple of cards that did receive erratas to them. Not too many of them, but there were some. Wow, this page is actually loading the slowest. There we go. Uh, I did include all the card texts now. This is this page is completely brand new. Um, so if you play UFS, you know, this page will help you if you care about the Yu Yu Hagasho cards. Um, there are a couple of erratas. Uh, Tiger Scream, for instance, is banned from constructed play. It was too, uh, considered too powerful. I, I don't know how to play the game, so I, I really don't know. Uh, but yeah, all the cards are here. Most of the erratas occurred at the bottom, actually. <sighs> okay, um, oh yeah, so yeah, like this card is supposed to be use K only, um, because it's attack zone can be changed, which is, uh, extremely powerful, that's why they made it use K only, I think it was too powerful to be used with any card in the game, uh, Tagoro Brothers had some erratas, uh, Columbus Task had an errata, Psychic Spyglass is named incorrectly, they never fixed it, um, but they did a rod of that. Boulder Barrage Genbu got a lot of erratas to it. And then, of course, the card text here at the bottom. And I've also started to set up set two. Uh, I have just a placeholder here for now, and whenever they uh, release more information about it. And same thing here. I have, you know, what it's going to look like when we get there. But uh, we are not there yet. And that's it. Uh, if you click the little blue thing up here, that'll bring you back to the home page. And that's it. That's everything. It's the whole site. Um, thank you for those who uh, have still continued to be supportive over these years. Uh, I hope all these changes are helpful, make the site a lot better than it once was. Uh, for those of you who are new to Yu Yu Hagasho, maybe this video helped. I did provide some imp cool information in it. Tried to make it as enticing as possible. Um, but other than that, this, took a, this went a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. 55 minutes is crazy. 
Also, on that note, database link is below. If you didn't already click it, my Instagram, join the Facebook group. Uh, my haves and wants list is probably down there too. I'm looking for 65 cards as I make this video. 40 uh, from Gateway. Uh, I'm sorry, 45 from Gateway. 20 from Alliance. So help me finish. Help me finish my collection, man. That would be pretty lit. So I can be the coolest guy on the block. Anyway, thank you so much if you watch this video through to the end. I appreciate it. And um, any of that missing and unknown information, if you can help us out with that, that would be amazing. On that note, have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Be well. And uh, that's it. Peace out. Bye.